So we first got approached by these owners about a year ago. They were having multiple fish with severe ulceration of their skin. So a lot of times ulcers in koi is actually caused by poor water quality. So they did a lot of improvements on their pond. Their water quality is now excellent, but they're still having a problem with these ulcers. So we took a swab of that ulcerated area to try to see if there was a very aggressive bacteria species, which is known to occur in koi occasionally. So unfortunately, in this case, it did come back as a resistant Aramonas species. So we had to do some very specific antibiotic treatments with these guys, both the injections and then they received a medicated feed. So in this case, the antibiotic is delivered into uh, food that we mix from a powder, add water to so we can measure it out exactly to how many fish are in the pond, and then they'll cut it up to the right size and make sure that everybody gets the drugs. Um, same problem happened last year and it was very effective treatment. I thought the muscle was doing better, but it's obviously not. Yeah, so it's just so hard to see on that on that spot underneath. I mean, I'm surprised just from the you know within one month's time, um, some fish have completely healed, and then the other ones, you know, when they're rechecked, you know, she comes back and you know she has to recheck them. She rechecks them. It's like anybody. Some of them react to the the antibiotics really well, but it's just all the other knowledge that we get from her of how how to maintain the ponds from winter when, uh, and summer. You know, which you just wouldn't know. Um, it isn't just a hole in the ground with some water in it. So they've definitely improved their water quality. That's no longer an issue. The fish that were mainly affected this year were new fish from last year. So they did not go through this bacteria last year and did not get treatment. So the other fish probably were able to ward off whatever bacteria it was, got some immunity from it, but these new naive fish were the ones that got sick this year. So it will likely be a reoccurring problem in this pond for any new fish that are brought in. And it's just something the owners have to be very mindful of. So with the very serious ulcerations, we always like to give injectable antibiotics. That way the fish can get a good supportive dose before they start on the medicated feed. This pond is relatively shallow and uncovered. So as any pond that has fish in it is obviously gonna be a great place for algae to grow. Unfortunately, there's no way around it. There's no way to sterilize your pond. So there's two different types of algae we see most commonly in ponds. Um, that string algae that you see in this pond can get very, very long and actually entrap fish if it gets long enough. There is another kind that's a cellular type that causes the water to be a pea soup green color. However, they have a UV on the system that takes care of that. They've done many improvements to this pond over the last year and it's improved their water quality significantly. But just having so many fish in a pond, they're gonna be producing a lot of waste that's gonna turn into essentially algae food. Um, a lot of the cases that we see with poor water quality, people are just not cleaning their filters enough or they're cleaning them too well. So if you really, really get in there and scrub all your filters, you're actually getting rid of all those good bacteria that you need for a healthy pond. So assessing that and then taking a look at the fish, basically if it swims, I don't care what color it is, how many scales it has. If it swims, we're definitely here to take care of it and we're, we'll go all over. I went Sonoma all the way down to Fresno. So we cover quite a big area of California right now. We're trying to spread the word that there's fish veterinarians, not just myself in California. We have fish veterinarians down in San Diego and out towards Davis. Most states nowadays have at least a few fish veterinarians that people can go to for good, educated help and rather than going online and scaring yourself with all the things you find on Dr. Google. We recommend a yearly checkup just like you would your dog or your cat. We offer discounts for prophylactic treatments. So basically we go out when nothing is wrong. They just kind of want an assessment of their pond situation. I mean, even if your fish aren't the expensive koi, they're I mean, still gonna cost you an investment to replace them and all that digging and maintenance that you put together in that pond, you really want it to be something that you're proud of and that you want to show off to all your friends and family. And these animals are part of the family just as you would a dog or a cat and people love them and they interact with them even though you can't hug them. They're still very personable animals. It's like I was saying earlier, I go, for her to come out and they, they, you know, people think it's expensive, but the, you know, these fish are way more expensive than just a visit. And you know, she's able to point out other things on the other fish at the same time. So, um, again, how do you put a price on your animals? I mean... So we are the only facility that does extensive traveling at this point. We do um, basic backyard ponds, some aquaculture, sign off on USDA fish going out of the country. So basically anything that has to do with fish, we are here to 
help, and if we can't do it, we will find somebody else who can. So the biggest time of year that we see a lot of problems is actually coming into the into the spring and early summer. So this is ponds very cold in the winter and below 50, 40 degrees. I mean, in our area, they're never gonna freeze. But when it starts to warm up in the spring, uh, all the bacteria and parasites, they got the, re the green light to go ahead and, and replicate. And unfortunately, the fish's immune system lags behind a little bit. So any active infections are really gonna be quite serious in the beginning of the spring and early summer. Now that we're further into the summer, we're actually seeing a different kind of set of problems because if it's say a parasite or a bacteria, the fish's immune system is usually strong and robust enough to ward it off themselves. Um, unless we see a fish that's say debilitated by some sort of secondary problem, they have congenital issues or say they get attacked by a raccoon and have trauma. Um, those are really what we're seeing now is just one fish incubators in ponds that are spreading disease and mayhem. She, she's the best. I mean, you know, I mean her and the service, uh, it's just the expertise, you know, you just wouldn't think that you could get that just on fish. You know, you go to a veterinarian or a doctor, you know, for your, ourselves and our kids, she treats them just the same way. She pulls them out, the care that she's given the fish, and and then, the, you know, the response coming back was, was the, you know, the great thing, She the checkups. You know, she calls you back to see how they're doing, you know, and, and then, you know, you, which you just wouldn't expect. Uh, you know, I mean, some of my vets don't do that. If you're concerned about anything with your fish, even if it's something that you think is a little problem, we'd really rather that you call us and check just to make sure we offer lots of low cost options as far as email and phone consults for little problems. Unfortunately, we can't dispense any medications and most of those problems will require an actual on-site visit. But we really recommend that if you have any questions whatsoever, you at least call us and ask and we can tell you if it's something you need to be worried about or if it's just something that's going to go away on its own.